So we want to start using NeoVim. It doesn't matter if you know nothing or if you are already an experienced regular Vim user. By the end of this video, you won't just have an editor or an IDE, you'll set up your own PDE or personal development environment. The one that suits you, the one you know everything about, the one that utilizes the best of the modern plugins that this ecosystem has to offer. This setup will work on any operating system, so before we start, make sure to install NeoVim. Our configuration journey begins in the init.lua file. You will need to create one in your .config slash nvim directory on Linux, BSDs and macOS, or in appdata slash local slash nvim on Windows. This is the first file that NeoVim sources on every startup, but we want to make our setup modular, so let's break down our configuration into multiple files. We are going to create a Lua directory, which has to be called that because NeoVim has a strict directory structure. Each Lua file in the Lua directory can be sourced with require keyword. And because we won't have many files there, this is how init.lua will look for the entire length of this video. Options.lua file will contain options and global variables. They include things like number of spaces in our tabs, whether or not we want to have a numbers column, or whether the system clipboard should be synchronized with Vim's registers. I've included a bunch of good options here, but make sure to use colon help option name command to read about those and tweak them to your liking. We are also assigning the leader key to space here. So when you see leader in any of the key bindings today, it just means space. Alright, now we come to the coolest part. Plugins. Historically, all the Vim and NeoVim plugins are stored on GitHub. You could manually download them all, but using a plugin manager is more convenient. There are many popular Vim plugin managers out there, like Vimplug, Vandal, Packer or Lazy. First two are written in Vim script, and we probably want to have a Lua one for NeoVim. Packer is a very popular choice, but it's not actively maintained anymore and has a ton of issues. Lazy.nvim has been released just a little less than a year ago, but has become a go-to standard right away. It looks fantastic, works like a charm, and is very well documented. We'll use that for our setup. Unlike many old plugin managers, you don't have to install it manually, so let's modify our file structure again and add plugins.luo and pluginlist.lua files. We'll use the first one to tell NeoVim to automatically download lazy.nvim the first time it's opened. As you can see, NeoVim will simply clone the required repo. Don't worry if it looks complicated, because you won't have to ever modify this piece of code again. We will require lazy and set it up with the list of plugins defined in plugin list. Let's go to our pluginlist.lua file itself, and because we required it in the previous one, we now have to return a table here. It will contain all the plugins we want to install. There is two ways to define them, as a simple string made from github username slash repo, or with a table that has this same string plus additional options. Even with this file looking like this, we can already restart NeoVim and see that lazy.nvim works. Now let's go back and define some plugins. We'll start with the ones that require the least configuration, like comment.nvim. What it does is comment the line under the cursor when we press GCC. It can guess files comment structure automatically, it can also uncomment lines, comment lines in bulk, and even comment in the middle of the line. We also want to choose some beautiful color scheme, I went with Groovebox because it's the one that you see in all my videos. But other popular choices are One Dark, Nord, and Tokyo Night. We install it by putting it in a table with priority 1000 so it loads before other plugins. We also provide a config key here, which is a function that will run after this plugin is loaded. In this case it will run color scheme groovebox command, just like you could do it manually in NeoVim's command mode. Let's install Lua line. It replaces Vim's default line and has some great additional features. It looks good by default and it's also very customizable. If you wanted to have some beautiful icons, you can also add this NVIM Web Dev Icons dependency here and enable them in the plugin setup options. Next, we come to the most important part of our setup. LSP, or Language Server Protocol, is the one that helps our editor communicate with a language server to get all the modern IDE features like code completion, error and warning markings, and sometimes even highlighting and auto refactoring. NeoVim has a built in LSP implementation, but to make its configuration easier, we use plugins. I'll show you two ways to configure your LSP, but both of them are quite lengthy. You probably don't want to put more than 20 lines of configuration in pluginlist.lua, so let's modify our file structure once again, and we will add after slash plugin directory. 
NeoBeam will then source all the Lua files within it only after all plugins are loaded. In essence, we can now configure plugins there. This approach will help us keep the configuration organized and concise. Add these three plugins to your plugin list and let's go to our after plugin directory to configure them. We'll make an lsp.lua file so we can know that LSP related stuff is configured there. In any case, we first want to create an onAttach function here. It will only be executed after the LSP server starts and connects to our editor. The function takes two arguments, client and buffer number. For our simple use case, we only need the second argument. So if we have multiple servers running at the same time, their key bindings won't overlap. Inside, we can define all the language server specific key bindings. But wait, don't you think this looks terrible? A lot of repetitive code here. Let's fix it by creating a helper function and only passing arguments that are different each time. Here, much better. As you can see, we have a lot of useful stuff here, like key bindings for renaming, called actions so that the language server can help you out, key bindings for going to definition, declaration, implementation, and even types definition. These other useful ones, which we are going to uncomment later, hover menu, which is usually the one that you get when you hover over something with your mouse in other editors, and you can even define your Vim commands here, like this format command that formats your code. Afterwards, we can start defining our language servers. You can find all the language server configurations simply by typing colon h lsp config all in NeoVim's command mode. You will get this menu, and now we can search for, for example, Lua language server. Click on N a couple of times, and we can see its setup manual. Let's add this simple config to our lsp.lua, and we are passing an onAttach function to it, as well as the capabilities variable. It's not required, but we will need it later in this video. Restart NeoVim, and if you now run lsp info command, you will see that you are probably missing Lua language server. And unless you use Nix package manager, or languages that don't need separate language server binaries like Dart for example, you probably want to also use Mason. Mason is a plugin that helps you install required language server binaries on any operating system. We have previously added it to our plugins, so let's now set it up. It is as simple as adding these couple of lines to the end of your lsp.lua file. Inside of this setup handler table, we can define how each language server is handled. And we can also add general handler that will be used as a fallback for all undefined ones. To make a special configuration for the Lua language server, we can simply move the setup part from earlier inside the Lua ls key. After restarting NeoVim, we can now use the mason command to open mason and install the language servers. Search for your favorite programming languages and press the I key. If you no longer need a language server, you can also delete it with a capital X key. So our language server is now functional. We can see the error messages and can click the capital K key to display the hover menu. But the most important feature is missing, and that is code completion. There is a bunch of different plugins that provide code completion menus, but the most popular one is NVIM CMP. Let's add it to our plugin list. By default, CMP only provides us with the completion menu. Therefore, we also need to include CMP NVIM LSP for actual LSP code completion. While we're at it, let's also add code snippet support. Lua Snip is a nice engine for that, and CMP Lua Snip integrates it with CMP. We also have friendly snippets here, which is a large snippet collection for different programming languages. We can now add another .lua file to our after plugin directory, and it will contain our completion configuration. Because we are going to use CMP and Lua Snip requires a lot throughout this file, let's put them into variables in the beginning. Next up we have these two lines, to load friendly snippets and set up Lua Snip. Next comes CMP configuration. It might look intimidating at first, but all it does is assign standard key bindings and integrate both LSP and Lua Snip. This once again is the part that you don't have to change much in the future. CMP also adds some LSP capabilities, so let's just add this line after the part where we defined capabilities in our lsp.lua file. Now we can restart NeoVim again and see code completion and snippets working. Very well, but why does Lua language server get angry at our Vim variable? It sure does exist, so why is it highlighted? That is because Lua language server doesn't actually know anything about NeoVim's namespace. And to fix it, let's add another plugin right after our LSP related ones. NeoDev.nvim will provide all the signature help and documentation. To set it up, 
all we have to do is add this one line right before we call lueLS.setup. Restart. Perfect. Now any future edits of our configuration will be that much simpler. But that's not all. Next, we will add a famous telescope.envim plugin. It adds this awesome search menu that you can use to switch files and buffers, search variable preferences, or generally fuzzy find through any list. We can make another file for telescope in after plugin and put this simple setup call here. If we go back to our lsp.lua, we can now uncomment these three lines in our own attach. And after another restart, we can now press GR to see all the references to any symbol, press space S to see local symbols from current file, and space capital S to see all the symbols in the project. Telescope can be a little slow in large code bases though, so to make it faster we can use telescope FCF native. This is entirely optional though, so if you can't get it to work, you can skip this. As you can probably see, it needs make to build itself, so make sure to have GCC or CLangd and make installed. There's also an alternative CMake build command that is probably easier to get to work on Windows. We can then add some additional options to telescope.lua file and load the extension. We are almost there, let's now set up nvim 3 seater to improve code highlighting. We will add this snippet in our plugin list.lua and then create yet another file in after slash plugin, this time for 3 seaters configuration. This is how minimal 3 seater configuration looks. You can define your favorite languages and file types here, and after restart, 3 seater will install all of them. Here is how it looks compared to standard code highlighting, and you can also install languages just by running ts install and then the language name. And there are many more cool plugins that you can install. Some honorable mentions are gitscience.envim to see your git changes, diffview.envim to have this incredible git diff interface, and neotree.envim if you like file managers from modern IDEs. You can find this entire configuration in the link in the description, and make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I also have a NixOS series going on the channel, so if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. And of course, the Discord server link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.